Hi, I'm Andrew, and welcome to episode 16 of the Neon Knitter podcast. So this episode is well overdue, and I figured it was about time that I filmed another episode. Because if I were doing the episodes how I normally do them, I would probably be on episode 17 by now. So, yeah, so that's why I have two finished objects to share today instead of one. And I have two whips and two acquisitions. So, I will start with what I am wearing for my finished objects. This is the Rays of Sun tee by Paula Pereira. And it's an interesting pattern because she did it, or she designed this pattern in partnership with Nitrino. <coughs> so, not sponsored. I'm just going to tell you about Nitrino. This is not sponsored. Um, Nitrino is an app you can download that it has its own library of patterns. And now I found this pattern while browsing Ravelry, but you can't download this pattern on Ravelry. You have to download it on Neutrino. And how Neutrino works is they have their own library of patterns. And you purchase one of their patterns. And the only way to view it is in their system. You can't download it as a PDF. You want to print out the pattern. You have to go through and screenshot every row of the pattern. And here's why. So the pattern, you pretty much have to scroll through all the rows. So you get on your screen, you have a chart with all the symbols up here for the pattern. And then you have each individual row down here. Only one row is displayed on the screen at a time, and you swipe to kind of to change your row. Excuse me. But the row on that chart will be highlighted according to what row you have down here. And each symbol, you can click on them and learn how to do the pattern for each stitch because Neutrino has made a video for every stitch. So there's a lot of features that are really good on it. And the, the other thing is that, sorry, the other thing is that they have, um, so the patterns are broken up into sections. Um, so, like, you have to go exit out of the one section you're on and click into the next section when you finish the section. Actually, when you finish the section, the menu comes up asking what section you want to do next. But with this, the neckline, the yoke, the body, and the sleeves are all separate sections. And I think the ribbing on the bottom might have been a separate section as well. Um, and actually, the yoke was split up into two sections. And I'm not sure if splitting for the sleeves was a separate section. I don't remember for sure if it was tacked onto the yoke or the body or if it was a separate section. I have no idea. So it's kind of weird to use Neutrino, in my opinion, because I'm used to using Knit Companion, where I just can import any PDF I want into Knit companion and I've got my row counters on the side and yeah I'm used to that so it was kind of annoying that I couldn't just download this as a PDF and put it in Nick companion also for those who really enjoy Neutrino you can't take a pattern that is outside of Neutrino and put it in their software it doesn't work you have to use the patterns that are in their system and those patterns are generally not available elsewhere. So, this also means due to their technology that their patterns are more expensive. So what did I pay for this pattern? About 
And usually, if you're paying $18 for a pattern, you're probably buying an entire ebook. Not in this case, you're getting one pattern. So it was a little pricey. But it was really hard to get gauge on different patterns with this yarn, and this was one of the few patterns I actually got gauge on. So, yeah, I made the trade off. But otherwise, very nice pattern. I recommend this pattern. Um, just know that Neutrino is a little bit of a, either you like it or you don't situation. So, yeah. So that's my uh, take on Neutrino. Um, but yeah, there are quite a few patterns in there. Mostly a lot of accessory patterns like hats and shawls and cowls and stuff like that. But there are a couple sweaters. I don't remember if there's one or two long sleeve sweaters. This was the only t-shirt, the only short sleeve sweater in their system. Um, but yeah, so anyways, I forgot to grab the yarn label before sitting down. But I used that big, huge 1,300 yard skein I bought at Yarnover last year from Sylvan Meadow Farm. Um, yeah, so if you want to see what the big, huge skein looks like, I will pop a photo on the screen, and also you can pop back and watch my yarn over 2023 video if you want to see me show off this game a little more but yes this was all one skein of yarn that made this it was a huge skein of yarn it had a huge price tag to go with it unfortunately but anyways this was hand dyed with indigo the downside is when you're knitting with it it turns your hands blue it doesn't turn you blue when you wear it Although I did wash it a few times before wearing it, so that probably helped. I don't remember the fiber content. I'm sorry, I didn't write it down. Um, I know she told me, but the label doesn't say, so. Anyways, so. Whatever it is, this is a little itchier than I would have liked, and so. Yeah. This yarn gears itself more towards a long sleeve sweater with an undershirt, but I didn't have enough to do long sleeves. So, yeah. So this is what I did. And, yeah, I really enjoy it. And honestly, once I've been wearing it for a while, I somewhat don't notice that it's itchy. It's just when I first put it on. And that's every time I wear it. It's when I first put it on. And I'm noticing it right now because I just threw this on to film this because I was actually wearing something else today. So, yeah. So, I will stand up and show you guys. Um, I feel like it's a little bit balloony on me, if you know what I'm trying to say, a little puffy. But, yeah, it hits where pretty much all my other sweaters hit. Which, yeah, my pocket's a little crooked. Yeah, dang it, it's bothering me. Um, yeah, it hits right at my waist here. So, yeah, I'm very happy with this. And, yeah, I'm. The only thing I don't like about it is that it's slightly itchy. That's about it. But it's not so itchy that I can't wear it. I can wear it. I just don't wear it as often. It's also slightly warmer than the rest of my short sleeve top. So this is a fingering weight pattern. But I couldn't tell if this was fingering or DK or sport or whatever the heck weight it was. And the lady who sold it to me didn't even know. So, But I got gauge on a fingering weight pattern. So I don't know. But anyways, so yeah. So that is The Rays of Sun Tea by Paula Pereira and Nitrino. So, yeah. I recommend you go check out Nitrino. Try it. And if you don't like it, you don't have to use it again. When you first download Nitrino, they do have one free pattern they will gift you. 
and it is a hat pattern. It's an absolutely stunning hat. I have been contacting them over and over repeatedly to see if they would do a a sweater version of it. So far, no luck. But that one was actually designed by Neutrino and not by another designer. So, yeah. Um, it's called the Astro Hat. Highly recommend that pattern. I haven't done it yet. I might. We'll see. Um, but yeah. Otherwise, Neutrino really isn't my thing. But I'm willing to use it if I find a pattern I really like. Because at the end of the day, it's about the finished item. So, yes. Anyways, I am going to cut away to some footage of me wearing my second finished object, and I will be back when I am ready to show my whip. So, since I have two finished objects in this episode, I have to film them each separately so you can see me wearing them. I know I said I wouldn't do a little clip with me wearing this when I did my Shepherd's Harvest video because I kind of showed this off already, but I'm going to do it anyways. So, this is my antler sleeve sweater by Stephen West. And I made it using yarn from Vermilion River Alpacas. It is their bumblebee yarn, 50% black alpaca, 50% yellow merino. And I use seven skeins, DK weight 200 yards each. Um, yeah, so that is that. Uh, hop back to the 2023 Shepherd's Harvest video if you want to see when I bought this yarn. Um, yeah. So this is my second finished object, and I will go up like this so you guys can see kind of where it hits on me. Um, yeah, it hits right at my waist, a little past it. And yeah, I'm really proud of this sweater, and I think the color is super unique. So yeah, that is my antler sleeve sweater. Okay, so. My whips. So my whips are, I have two whips that I'm going to share today. One of them is a brand new whip, and the other one is an old one you've seen before that I haven't worked on in a while. So I'm going to start with that, because it's the one I'm most actively working on at the moment. This is my Westnitz go-to raglan. And guys, I finally decided to start the sleeves on it. And if you guys are new here, you will know, you won't know this, but if you aren't new here, you might know this, you might not, I'm not sure. I like to knit my sleeves two at a time. That's just my personal preference, so I am currently doing that. Don't mind the fact that I'm in the middle of a round, but yeah, I like to knit my sleeves two at a time. So, yeah, so the this is the Westnitz Go-To Raglan. Um, there are two ways you can make this pattern. Either you can hold two fingering weight yarns together for the main part of it, and then all the ribbing, just a strand of DK weight, or you can use one strand of worsted for the whole thing. Um, so, basically, Stephen used for his marled sample where he's holding two fingering weights together, he used DK for the ribbing. But on his one where he's just using one thicker strand, he used Lebby NMA Merino Aaron, I think, for the whole thing. So. So, the yarn I am using is from Round Mountain Fibers. Now, I have extra because Round Mountain Fibers sells in bulk, and my local store, Harriet and Alice in Edina, Minnesota, that stocks Round Mountain Fibers, doesn't stock this colorway, so I had to order it because it's absolutely stunning. So, this 
So the main color is, and this is Round Mountain Fibers Willow Worsted, 100% superwash merino, 185 yards. Um, Ravelry has it listed as an Aaron weight, but I would agree with the worsted. Um, but yeah, this is Round Mountain Fibers Willow Worsted in the colorway Beehive Ginger. I ended up having to get 10 skeins of this, and then my contrast, 5 skeins. This, same yarn, the color is called Ginger Root. And these two colors, Round Mountain Fibers, developed actually to go together. So that's why I picked them, because I was really drawn to this one, and I needed a solid, so I got the coordinating solid. So Beehive Ginger and Ginger Root. Um, and I think it knits up really beautifully. And I am very happy with how it's going. And guys, there's a feature to this pattern that I'm really excited about. The sleeve cuffs have built-in thumb holes, which you will have seen when I inserted the photo of the pattern. But yeah, there's built-in thumb holes on the sleeves. So that's super exciting. All right. So that is enough talk about this whip. Um, that'll probably be my next finished object. Not sure yet, but probably. Um, so, and the reason I started the sleeves when I did is because it all has to do with timing in which I can go do my photo shoot with it, um, and my access to the background. I can really do it anytime, but it's just... I have a thing going on in the general area of where I want to do it. And so it's more convenient if I have it done by then so that I can um, not have to go out of my way to get to the area or the place with the background for my photo. So, but if I don't have it done by then, it's fine. I can get it done at a later date. I just have to get myself to the artwork I want to do it in front of. So. Yeah, that's why I started the sleeves when I did, because I want to get my photo shoot done. All right, so my second and final whip that I'm going to share, and I have more whips than that, but these are the only ones that are actually active at the moment. So if it, if the, the, if there is ever a whip that I have going that I haven't worked on in a while, I usually don't show it in an episode. So, yeah, unless there's a reason to show it. So, this is my second whip. This is the Slippy V Sweater by Stephen West. Um, I think this looks really pretty. So, here is the yarns I'm using. The main color is this. This is a huge cone of fingering weight yarn. This is Brown Sheep Yarn Company. Uh, yeah, it's Brown Sheep Nature Spun Fingering in the colorway Baked Bean. 100% wool. This, this cone is a whole entire pound of yarn. So, yeah. Um... And I like to save my yarn labels, so the sticker that was inside the cone, I took it out and taped it to a piece of paper and then cut it out. So now I have it as my yarn label. Um, so that is the information about the yarn. Then my contrast color, this marl yarn. The pattern called for Shopple Wool Zabra Ball Stark 6. Um, or no, Zauber Ball Crazy. Stark 6 is the DK version of Zauber Ball Crazy. No, it calls for Shop of Wool Zauber Ball Crazy, which is the fingering weight. Um, but there's a lot of people who use Spin Cycle Dyed in the Wool for theirs. Um, but anyways, I'm using Yarn Hero Color Mix Sock. And the color is called Toy Box. And it is 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, and it is 385 yards. So, 
that is what I'm using, and it is a really good substitute for spin cycle dyed in the wool or shop a wool zobber ball crazy if you just want something a little different. So that is what I'm using for my marled yarn. And I think it is turning out really nice. Um, so this skein of Yarn Hero Color Mix Sock, I got it at Shepherd's Harvest in 2023 from the Yarn Adventure Yarn Truck. And this I got at Rocking Horse Farm in St. Cloud at the 2023 St. Cloud Spin Fest. I bought it from the Rocking Horse Farm, their actual year-round yarn shop. I didn't get it from any of the vendors. So, that is what I am working on most actively right now. So, yeah. So, now we're going to move into acquisitions. I'm going to start with the slightly less exciting, excuse me, acquisition. Well, not that it's not exciting. It, it's pretty exciting. But this is one of my acquisitions. Now, this thing is about as big as my head. It's huge. Um, I don't remember the yardage, but I can put it on the screen for you guys. I bought this at Stephen B. And the label was missing, but they knew what yarn it was, so they wrote it down. They don't know the color name, so I don't know what the color is called. But this is a yarn here. Bleh. This is a yarn snob Powerball. Fingering weight yarn snob powerball. And obviously it's blues and white. I don't know the name of the color. Label is missing. Um, they did have the yardage written down. Um in and they had a thing stuck to it. I don't remember the yardage. So I will put that on the screen, but it's a lot of yarn. Um I could probably make a whole sweater out of this if I wanted to. Um, <clears throat> so either I'm going to make just a whole plain sweater out of it, which I could do, or I could find something with a fun texture or something, or my other option is I might make the Francis sweater by James Cox and have this be the main color. So the Francis sweater by James Cox. And then I just have to pick what color the sleeves are going to be. So that's another option. And I will say the reason this is caked up, I did not cake this up. It was caked up at Stephen B. So this was a skein that somebody bought and then they returned. So this was on clearance. It was on discount. Um, it was still around like 80 bucks though, because it's a lot of yarn, but yeah, so that is that. I got this huge skein the size of my head. So yes, this is a slightly less exciting acquisition. I don't know yet what to do with it. I'm thinking the Francis sweater by James Cox, but that is to be determined. Okay. This is my final acquisition. Sorry about that. My phone randomly decided to run out of storage in the middle of me filming. So I had to deal with that quick. Um, so so here's my final acquisition. This is the yarn that I bought when I went to Dandelion Fiber Company. If you have not seen my tour of that shop, hop back and watch it if you're curious. In that video, when I showed off what I bought, I was very cryptic about what I was going to make out of it. And here's why. 
Honestly, I forgot the name of the pattern, and I didn't want to pause filming to go look it up. Because then I'd have to piece together my video, and it was just a lot of work. So now I have it written down on a notepad so I don't forget. So, here is my acquisition. And I bought it to go with this. So these are lace weight mohair skeins. So this is the skein it's all based off of. This is Isager Silk Mohair in color number 22. Yes, I have a whole bunch of these skeins. I'm just using one for this project, and I'll find a project for the rest of them. Um, I think I have six more of these. Um, I was originally going to have this be a main color for the sweater I'm going to be making, but um, I then found these two and decided that it was really pretty with these, and so this is going to go in the yoke. So, before I show you the pattern, I'm going to tell you these yarns. I don't know how to pronounce the name of this company. Bushes and Bishes? I don't know. Or Bishes and Bushes, excuse me. Bishes and Bushes? I don't know. But this is their Le, Le Petite Silk and Mohair. Le Petite Silk and Mohair? I don't know. Anyways, it is 30% Mulberry Silk, 70% Super Kid Mohair, 230 yards, lace weight, obviously, and the color is called Soft Gold. Soft Gold. <coughs> and here's the other one. I don't need to go over all the specs, obviously, because this is the same yarn, but the color is called Dark Gold. So, I thought this was kind of more of a regular gold, um, Isager Silk Mohair, 75 Kid Mohair, 25% Silk. Um, yes, the only difference is it's 75-25, and this is 70% um, Mohair, 30 Silk, so it's 5% difference. Also, I believe this is just one yard less. Um, I believe it's... 230 or I think it's 229 yards or is it 231 I don't remember because it only says it in meters 212 meters whereas this is 210 meters so yeah but I thought these went really well together and I will be very curious to see what this sweater looks like I don't know when I'm going to buy the rest of the yarn for it yet but the pattern I will be doing is Coglin by Hanny Rimmon. Hanny is H-A-N-N-E, so I don't know if it's Hanny or Han or how to pronounce it. Um, and then her last name, R-I-M-M-E-N. And the pattern, Coglin, K-O-G-L-E-N. So Coglin is the name of the sweater. And it is a free pattern, courtesy of Ficalana Yarns. Um... So it is available in several languages on their website, including English. So yeah, and again, I'll put a photo on the screen. But how it works is it's, I don't remember if it's fingering or DK. I think it's DK. Don't quote me on that, but I, it's, I think DK. That sounds right. So it's DK weight held with, lace weight mohair and so the main color you just pick a color you like and marl it with a mohair that you like that you like them together or whatever and then on the yoke your DK white yarn is a cream an off-white or a white just like a natural color like that and all three rows of the diamonds on the yoke have that as your color and then you change out the color of mohair so yeah so i think that looks really cool when you do that so yeah each of these three are all marled with a white 
when you knit the sweater. And then the main color, you just pick a color you like and you pick a mohair color you like. And yeah. So I think that's going to be really pretty. And I'm looking forward to that. So yeah. So anyways, that was my final acquisition. So that's all I have to share for this episode. So I'm Andrew. Thank you for checking in here at The Neon Knitter, and I will see you in my next episode.